were over the phone and literally got down on one knee while I was in another state. And Nora said, yeah. A while ago, as happens to everybody, we all get older. Nora started going through menopause, and that's when I noticed a change in her. She became a little bit more distant. She started going out a little bit more. Girls' night out became every Tuesday. Then it became every Tuesday and Thursday. Then girls' night out became every weekend, and they got longer and longer. The next thing I knew, she was out all night. And then everything really changed three months ago when she started hanging out with her friend Wendy. It scares me to think that Nora's going out with Wendy. Nora's told me that Wendy says, if you're not getting it at home, it's okay to get it somewhere else. Nora and I aren't intimate that much anymore. It, things have changed so much over the past several years, and especially the last three months, that we have a hard time being together. It doesn't seem like she wants me to be near her. 20 years ago, Nora put this ring on my finger, and I've never taken it off. This ring and Nora mean everything to me. I can't imagine a world without her. I, I can't imagine waking up in the morning and she's not there. I can't imagine not coming home. I can't imagine coming home and not finding Nora there. And it's happening way too often for me now. Nora Jessup, age 48. A clerk suspected of misplacing her marriage license while enjoying girls' night out. Investigation day two. With the perimeter set up around the suspect's place of employment, agents keep watch for their mark's appearance. Patience pays off when the suspect, Nora Jessup, is seen exiting her office. Noticing that she's on the phone, investigators request updated intel from headquarters. While Nora changes her shoes and adorns herself with jewelry beside her truck, agents are informed that her phone call was to her husband, explaining to him that she needs to work late. Mobile units track Nora to a local bar. She enters and settles into a table on the patio. She continually checks her phone, apparently waiting for her companion. As time passes, it becomes clear that her happy hour cohort won't be arriving. Not one to let a good time go to waste, Nora proceeds to let her server know that she's ready and willing to be serviced. After flirting with him for the duration of her stay, she ends the night with a hug from him, and wobbly, she exits the establishment, returning home for the remainder of the evening. Investigation Day 5. With only speculation as to the suspect's motives, agents wait outside the home she and her husband share. Armed with the knowledge of Jane's late-night work schedule and the promise of a girl's night out, perimeter units are none too surprised when an unknown vehicle stops in front of Nora's house. From the car emerges an unknown female. Halfway up the walk, the neon miniskirted MILF is met by Nora mimicking her friend's outfit. With her menopausal powers combined, the two take to the town, soon arriving at a local bar. Ground agents enter first and watch while Nora and her friend shake their moneymakers on the dance floor. Their peacocking attracts attention. An unknown male slides in and begins cutting a rug with Nora. The man ebbs and flows crazily, causing Nora's friend to come to her rescue. After a while, the girls call it a night and dance back to Nora's truck. They enter and are followed to Nora's house, where they remain for the rest of the evening. Investigation Day 8. With Jimmy working late again, perimeter units remain stationed outside the home he and his wife share. Nora is eventually spotted as she exits. Detectives take notice of her attire as she enters her truck. Apparently ready for another wild night out, she's tracked to her favorite watering hole. She is inside less than 15 minutes before hooking up with another unknown male. Nora lets her man buy her a couple of beers while soaking in the late night heat. After downing the brews, it seems that a test of strength is in order. While Nora goes up and over the top, it's Jimmy who's losing his grip as evidenced in this recorded phone call. Hello? Hey, sweetheart. I'm, I'm just walking out of the hospital now. I thought uh, we could spend some time together. Right now? No, uh-uh. I, I told you uh, Wendy and I were going out. 
You love it, you like. I'm sure Wendy would understand that you want to spend some time with your husband, wouldn't she? We've already made plans. Why didn't you tell me this a long time ago? Why didn't she tell me a surgery was going to be canceled? I'm calling you now, and I'm telling you that the surgery is canceled. I'm walking out of the hospital right now. I couldn't have called you any earlier. I'm staying so. here. Wendy and I are having a good time. I'm not leaving. I'm sorry. So, I'll talk to you later. With Nora enjoying the passion of yet another unknown male, investigators call it quits and begin compiling their data for Jimmy's final review. Come. With evidence of Nora's suspicious behavior in hand, Jimmy is brought in to review the findings. Unprepared for what he's about to witness, Jimmy settles his nerves before viewing the truth. First of all, Jimmy, I just want to say uh, thank you for coming out today. Appreciate you helping me, Clark. I understand there's a lot of things going on in your relationship right now, and I, I can understand what you're going through. We did some surveillance outside of your home and came out with some great information. Are you ready to see it? I'm ready. Let's do it, Clark. Okay. On this day of investigation, we had investigators outside of your house. Do you recognize that woman? That's Wendy. Wendy is a bad influence. Wendy is the reason that we've, we're having problems. Okay, well, they meet each other, they get into the car, and moments later arrive at a local bar, do some dancing. She seems to be pretty normal, you know, with her girlfriend dancing. I could understand that. And then is seen with this gentleman, dancing with him. I don't see her friend in there anywhere. Here comes over her friend Wendy. A few moments later, they exit the bar. They get back in the truck and go back to your house. On this day of investigation, we have Nora getting into her car, driving down the street and arriving once again at a local bar. And she's seen sitting with this gentleman. Do you recognize him? No, I've never seen him before, man. Looks like he challenges her to an arm wrestling match and licks his hand. And it looks like they're kind of laughing and enjoying each other. She's then seen conversing with another gentleman, gets up and sits in his lap. What the on her shoulder with your wedding ring on. And sometime later, they're seen exiting together out to the parking lot. He spins her around, starts hugging her and Is that kissing her and returns to your house. Now, do you actually recall that night of yeah. her coming home? You remember that night? Mm -hmm. Did she just lay down in bed with you like everything was all kosher and great? Yeah, like it's been the last 20 years, man. And you didn't feel anything weird coming off of her? She didn't act weird? Nothing seemed funny? It didn't smell like men's cologne? or Just as weird as it's been the last three months. Jim, I know what you're going through, man. Honestly, we know exactly where they are. Are you ready to go bust them? I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm all, tired right. Of the all right, we'll call the detective on the way, find out exactly the location, and we'll go bust them. Let's do it. All right, my man, let's go. Go, Clark. All right. All right, this way. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give that detective a call so we can get this exact location. Let's do it. Hey, detective. Okay, we got eyes on Nora. She is sitting with an unknown gentleman that was not in any of our surveillance. Okay. We will be there shortly. With another guy. With another guy. So you feel that she actually goes out to seek these men because of her friend Wendy basically being her almost partner in crime. Absolutely. 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 I, th I, I bet you anything Wendy's introduced her to all these guys. I mean, she wasn't like this before. We're actually pulling up on the place right now. I see our detective is outside. So over there. She's going to get it. And yep, yeah, there's our boy right there. Where is she? All right, everybody out. Right there in the corner. Top corner, top, 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 corner, top, corner, top, top corner, top corner. Out dancing? Out dancing? What the f? Who the hell are you, dude? What are you I'm doing a husband. Here? I'm a husband, man. Who the f? See the ring? What are you doing out here, Nora? Seriously, I'm out of here. Dude, you do not. Hey, I'm. Dude, I'm not here. I'm not here. Hey, you got your ass out following you. All these damn cameras. What are you doing? Oh my god, can I do I'm embarrassing you. I'm embarrassing you. I got a question for you. I'm you cheaters. I don't know why. Why would you do this to your husband of 20 years? It's been 20 years. Why are you doing? 
He's a freaking doctor. I never see him. I never see him. I'm saving lives. Oh my God, I never so see you. I never see you. Kids. So that makes it okay you're for you to your husband? You're never home. You're always out hey, dancing. I'm not dancing. This guy. Come with No, come with Come with me. Mother. Who's this? Who's this? Damn it. On me. What about it, man? That's my wife. Are you sure? I got to hear your side of the story. Right there, bud. What do you got? What drives you? I can't do school. I can't do Come on, bitch. Come on, bitch. This ain't the first mother. Yeah. What else? Last. Bitch. Yeah. Bitch. Out of here. You're the bitch. You can't find your own damn woman. How about you take on can't your wife? Can't find your own damn woman. You tell your wife how it is. How about you give her some young sometime? Oh, no. We're done drinking. Come on. Oh, my. No more with Wendy. We're not doing this shit anymore. Coming. Man, I'm Clark Gable with, with Cheaters, and I just got a quick couple questions for you. So, did you did you ever get any uh, any information from her regarding her husband? Did she? I heard she told you her name was Candy. She never told me she was married. No. She didn't tell you anything. No, Nora. You're working too we much. We worked too hard for this over 20 years. You were working too much. 20 years. Do you love me I or not? I'm so tired of you. I want a kid. You just. Can't. You think we didn't try? I wanted children. <laughs> so you guys were actually so you were pursuing each other. I thought she was cool. Okay, but there was nothing ever said in there about a husband or anything? No. And did you ever meet any of her we, friends yeah, or anything? Yeah, no, there was a husband. An ex-husband. An ex-husband. I don't do this kind of huh? Okay. Not on purpose. You know, I worked hard for us. You worked and you worked nice. hard for us, too. You worked hard the entire time I was going to school. We heavy cameras all over the place. Oh, my come on, God. Come on, come on. Let's go in the van. No, come I'm on. not going in a van. Why? No. Then where are you gonna go? Then where are you gonna go? I don't know. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go home. Then let's go home. Somebody, we can come back and get the truck anytime. What's more important, no. the truck or us? She never acted suspicious to you or weird or you didn't feel any natural energy off of her? She had a good story. Her husband was an anesthesiologist, never at home. You know, that that's why they divorced. You know, she wanted kids. He never gave it to her, all that. And then all of a sudden, you know, like that mother breaks in. Okay, well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to go see what's going on over here. Tell her to call me. No more with Wendy, man. You know Wendy's a bad influence. No, she's not. She's my best you, friend. You told if it wasn't me, for her, my God, who would, I, her, if it wasn't who would her? I have to talk to at night? Me? Who would I have to talk to? In, mm -hmm. And where are you? Where are you? What do you want me to do? Where are you, honey? You are so, not at home. Honestly, you are you guys, not I just got, at home. I have to ask you guys about a decision right now for the two of you. I mean, you got a 20-year marriage. With no children. Thank you very much. Okay, we're and that's not my fault. It's my fault? Yeah, it's your fault. You really want to give up a 20-year marriage so? on one night so? stands in random bars? What, like, so? what do we have together? So? What you guys have so? 20 years what of marriage. What do we have together? What do you mean, 20 so? 20 years of marriage. 20 not, oh, you do not raise your voice at me. Don't tell me our marriage is we are, so... We are in public listening to you. That's right. You're out in public with another man. What the f*** is that? What the f***? Get you're my wife. louder, my God. You fucked your ass, I oh, can. Almighty. Hey, watch your step, oh. you guys, please. Y'all can come home with me if you want to. Order the next bar to get the next bitch to be lying to me. So the ultimate decision, I think you should really make a decision right now. Do you want to keep cheating on your husband of 20 years? Do you want to actually communicate? Have whatever the f you want. You! I don't, actually, you know, I don't think you should drive right now, so... Everything is mine because you left, dumbass! Come here! Good luck finding some damn now! Face all over damn TV. Yes. Jimmy, you want to step out and talk to her real quick? What she have to say? She can say it from right there. Jimmy. Does she have something to say? I don't think you should come home tonight. To my home? To my home. I put you through school. I don't think but you should I've been working so much. Wait, what you just said. You I've just, been I working so much. How is it not my home if I've been working so much? But listen to what you just said. You 
you, you put anymore. him through school to do yes, what? To become an anesthesiologist. To work 24 7, leave me. Have I not been appreciative oh, wow, of that's it? A great Have I not marriage. been appreciative that of the fact? Marriage. But you Have made I a choice. Have not been appreciative of the fact of how much you've worked for both of us? No! You've been appreciated. We have no kids. Regardless of the fact, though, you just said he put him through school. So you basically made him do this by so by, all, by supporting him through his school. So you right. knew that he wouldn't be home. At, he wouldn't be home a lot. He wouldn't be around to see you a lot. But that was a choice that you made. You know, you, you said it several times. No, how is no it, how is it, me. Oh, how is okay. it all Once my you're fault? you're a doctor, then you are never home. You're never How is it all there, my fault that we have kids? You're never going to be at home. I'm not really sure. And, it, and it's all my fault. And it's all my fault. But it's all my fault. How long are there, are there two people in this marriage, or just one? Are there two people, or just one? Really? I think there's just one now. Oh, oh, okay. I think your ass better not come home. No, it's my house. My money, bitch. My still works. Yours no, don't. No, mine still works. Yours is asleep. Let her walk home. Turn off all the. Damn cards. She wouldn't have any cash. Everything's in my name. That man loves you, and you've been with him for 20 years. I mean, that's not even a friend. That's a soulmate. I'm tired of it. No soulmate. So man. instead of communicating that to him over a relationship you've had for 20 years, you just decided to, to kind of go out on a whim? Uh, just like he called you guys to come out and spy on me. Oh, yeah. That's a soulmate, all right. So what would you say to somebody that's going through the exact same thing? To find out the truth. Find out what's going on. Settle your mind and settle your soul. You can't... You can't live a relationship or a life based on a lie. I love Nora more than anything. and I want my old Nora back, not, not the Nora she is now. I don't even know who that was. I don't know who she's become. After the confrontation, Jimmy admits that his anger got the better of him. Stay tuned when we reveal his final decision. At the end of the show, Cheaters informs you on what he decides. But for now, Richard Sharp has been with his girlfriend for over two years. Dismayed by her recent callous attitude, Richard comes to Cheaters for assistance in understanding why. Relationship that would move forward and possibly marriage. But things have changed in the last three or four months, and I'm kind of worried. Timmy Lang, age 40. An unemployed woman accused of giving attention only when the bills are due. After a concise briefing, Cheaters dispatches a squad to the suspect's residence. Sometime later, Cheaters operatives spot their target leaving the apartment with an unknown male. Lang rides off in the man's convertible sports car for a short jaunt to the far side of the apartment complex. The suspect and her mystery man enter the pool area. In the... Well, excuses are, is I'm with my girlfriends, okay? Well, she's got five really true girlfriends and four of them have full-time jobs, okay? So either one loses a job and one gets hired each week or she's completely full. Or she's straight up lying to me to her face to face she's not looking me in the eyes i mean the young lady doesn't have a job i'm paying her rent and i'm trying to figure out where her time's going finding a quiet spot the not so innocent pair begin a torrid makeout session things get hot and heavy as they tear at each other's clothing finally sated for the moment the suspect and the unknown male leave the pool area they get into the sports car and drive back to Lang's abode. The man escorts the suspect up the stairs into the apartment. A short while later, the suspect's companion departs, leaving cheaters to finish out the day. Two, two and a half years, and I just couldn't believe that that bitch would do that, that little trifling hoe. Now, if she did do that, she's gone. No more rent. No more late night burgers, no more late night rub down. She's screwed, glued, and tattooed. Let's go. Cheaters detectives continue the stakeout of Lang's home. At some point, the familiar convertible arrives. Lang joins the driver in the car. The suspect and her beau move a short distance to an obscure part of the complex. Obviously, the couple enjoy taking the risk of being seen by playing out in the open. 
and sometime later, the illicit pair make the journey back to the suspect's apartment. Lang's companion, now identified as James Barry, gets out and walks the suspect upstairs to her home. A while later, Barry's emergence signals the end of the day of surveillance. Knowing that the suspect has spent the night at Richard's home and that Richard has left for work, Cheater's agents watch the place. Soon, Barry arrives in his convertible. Lang rides with her secret lover to a city lake. At the lake shore, Lang throws down a blanket and fights the wind a bit to get it smoothed out. As Barry joins her, the suspect plants a luscious kiss on her paramour. Comfortably watching the clouds, Lang lies on the blanket wrapped in Barry's arms. A while later, the pair leave. During the ride, the cheater's mobile team notes Lang disappearing from view as she dips her head into Barry's lap. The suspect and her companion finally arrive at a restaurant known for chicken dinners. The two find a table and enjoy their meal. Sometime later, Barry and Lang leave the restaurant. The route takes the suspect back to Richard's apartment. Lang gives Barry a few passionate kisses to end their romantic liaison. Any notions that Lang has of continuing the deceit will soon be disassembled as Cheaters collates the facts for a disheartened Richard. Coming up, the confrontation. Thanks for watching Cheaters, Detective Gomez here. You know, there's nothing worse than catching somebody cheating. So I want you to visit DetectiveGomez.com and take my free cheating quiz. I've also written a book called Play to Win that helps you through a cheating situation. And of course, you can also watch my web series called Detective Gomez Private Eye. So visit DetectiveGomez.com today and remember, don't cheat. Now that the suspect's devious actions are captured, Cheaters gathers the evidence for presentation to Richard. Stoic and resolute, Richard prepares to face the truth of an appalling revelation. Well, first thing I'd like to say, Richard, is, you know, thank you for coming out this evening and stepping away from a few things. Well, with that being said, Richard, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. Okay. Um, and come up with some pretty interesting findings. Okay. I just want to prepare you for what I'm about to show you, because some people do find it very hard to watch. I just want to know the truth, Clark. All right, absolutely. Okay. Richard, we begin our investigation outside of her residence. A few moments later, we see Tammy emerge with this black male. They get into his Porsche and they leave. That's when they arrive at the other side of the apartment building. We see the two of them get out and he puts his arm around her and they walk over to the pool. They go and sit on one of these lounge chairs and that's when we see them begin to kiss. They're very playful. You see her shirt gets pulled up and actually exposes her breast for a second. A while later, they walk over to the Porsche. They get back inside and he returns her to her apartment. He goes inside, and sometime later we see this male emerge, gets back into his Porsche, and he leaves. That's my apartment. I pay for that son of a bitch. <laughs> really? Yes, sir. So this is a place that she's staying that you pay for? Correct. On this day of our investigation, Richard, we are outside of your residence. You recognize that place? Yeah, that's my residence. Okay, well we see Tammy at the door, and a short time later, that Porsche pulls up, picks her up, she gets in, they back out, and they leave. As our detectives follow the two of them, they arrive at a lake. That's when we see Tammy putting down a blanket. Mm -hmm. This gentleman's got a satchel full of food, a couple of drinks, and they're having a picnic by the lake. Looks like they're having a little bit more than a picnic. I'd say so. Yeah. They kiss, they get very romantic, they lay together. And a few moments later, we see them get back in that Porsche. This might be hard to watch, Richard, but she is actually engaging in fellatio. Mm -hmm. As he drives, and she continues the fellatio, they finish up and they arrive at a restaurant. They walk in, get some chicken and rice, they sit together, and have a meal. During the time that they're actually eating in this restaurant, yeah. she receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. I want you to tell me if you remember this.
as they're finishing up their chicken, they then walk back outside, they get in the Porsche. We see them return to your residence. Yeah, she gets dropped nice. off. They embrace with a hug and a very long kiss. Mm -hmm. You can see she has some of her extra food in her hand. I see that. He slaps her on the behind, smiles. Yeah, worst thing about it is she's smiling too. So that's what I want to get to the bottom of. Absolutely, I completely okay. understand that, Richard. Yeah. So listen, Richard, I understand you're pissed off. I understand you've seen enough. At this point in time, why don't we go ahead and get in the vans. We'll get to the location and wait for some intel and meet our detective there. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, whatever it is, I just want to know what the hell is really going on. I want to get to the bottom of this. I want to know the truth. I completely understand right this way. Yes, sir. So I just want to let you know that we're all here for you, man. And I don't guess. feel like you're in the wrong. Just do everything that you can. If there's one chance that you had to it's show now. her, it's now. It's now. Damn it, let's go. Yeah, and this is your choice, too. Don't feel like she has any choice. Is that him right there? Yeah. Miscommunication or not, let's Copy do that, this. Copy that, Gomez. Come on up. Hey, sorry, Detective. Right, follow me, they're on the third floor. Let's go now. All right, ready? Let's go. Everyone out. Let's get this done. knock on the door, mm -hmm. give you the cue. All right, the reason why he's dressed as a homeless man, he's gonna be knocking on the door. Thanks for watching Cheers, Detective Gomez here. You know, there's nothing worse than catching somebody cheating. So I want you to visit DetectiveGomez.com and take my free cheating quiz. I've also written a book called Play to Win that helps you through a cheating situation. And of course, you can also watch my web series called Detective Gomez Private Eye. So visit DetectiveGomez.com today and remember, don't cheat. Hey, 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 what the? Tammy, what's, what what is all this? Get the hell up out of here. What happened exactly? I love you. You pay all my bills. You let me in here sucking this milk. You can kiss my wife. Oh, no. No. Come here, Richard. No. No, I don't want to talk to you. Anything you bulls kiss my ass. So how exactly did you two meet? I've been known her for, for 15 years. You've known her for 15 years? Yes. Oh, so, you, so you, you're aware of Richard? I don't know. Richard, I don't give a about Richard. Y'all better get up out of I'm not going to take Tammy, Tammy, no Tammy, why are you chained to the wall? Yeah. There's, there's ketchup all over the bed. You guys got plastic in here. It looks like a murder scene. I love you. Can I please put my clothes on? I don't need this kind of my life? You want me to unchain hey, I you? Can't right. I can't understand. Yeah, Excuse me. Get out of here right now. Richard, can I talk to you in the bathroom, please? No, I no, love no, you. No. Yes, I love you. No. no. Let's not do this. You, no. Let's not do this. Let's, let's, not, do, not, do let's this. not do what? Can I talk to you, please? No, no. Can what? I please talk to you? No. You, can I please talk to you? Why don't we get some no, clothes on? Words you. cannot let's express get some clothes what on the hell first. you've done or doing. How did you guys originally meet? Yeah, through, through different things, uh, through different in, my, things. In, in my work and stuff, and I've just I've done some things for her family. Mm -hmm. I know I, I know her. Well, take that off your head for one. Hey. Okay, I'm cool with that. Can I talk to you? Is it actually like this? Understand that. My question for you is: uh, You tell me you're the one with the whips and chains on. You know, you put you. Pick
Took her a lot of places. You had a picnic. I mean, you're very romantic with this woman. That's a, that's a special I mean, friend of mine. A special friend giving you fellatio and you're dropped out in your Porsche? And you're saying you saw a special. I can understand that, but at the same time... Everybody needs to have a special person in their life. I got mine. You got yours? Yes. The only problem is that she also has someone else. Okay. So her and him can both leave because I got another one. You got another one? Yes. Does she know that? And who killed her? What's he knows? I got one question for you. Is the reason why we haven't had sex the last two weeks is yes. because you've been this yes. month? I understand that. Tell me. Please that. get out of my face, Richard. Yes, I thought okay. You, were gonna apologize. you love me, but now you want me out of your face. You love me, but you want me out of your face. But it's done now. It's done it's now? I'll get out of your face. Yes, I'll exercise no! that thing out of me. Hello. You have nothing else to really say. Can I, put my I say get the up out of here. Yeah. I didn't really know about it. You are Listen here, you son of a bitch. Let me tell you something. 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 Let me tell for another night, so this is my Tammy, now. Tammy, let's so just get some here. clothes on you, all right? Can we get some clothes? Where are your clothes? Oh. Let's get some. Let's just get some clothes on you. Hey, get them apart. Get them apart. Don't let them hurt themselves. There's a lot of strong. There's a lot of sharp stuff around here. Relax, you guys. Relax. So, James, how long has this been going on between you and her? I told you I've been going on for a while. We just did this for this time. James, do you feel guilty about what you've done? I'm guilty? I don't feel. Okay. I don't feel good about it. Could y'all please get out of my way? Y'all got what y'all want. Y'all. Get out what y'all want. Get y'all please get out of my way. I see you with that can in your hand. You're getting too close. Get his ass out of here. Now please get out. We going this way. I'll get you. You. your ass in the back of that man. No, you made a mistake, and I understand a calculated mistake, but he seems like obviously a very forgiving person. But you got to realize the gravity of what you've done. We just found you chained up to a bed with a black mask on your face, a bib in your mouth. And how long have you really known James? I've been on him a while. We just reconnected. I understand reconnection, but why would you do that to this man when all he's trying to do is work and make a better life for him and you? He's been good to me and my family. I don't, I don't know. You and I were in a relationship. We're not anymore. I did love Are you. you. Serious? I did love you, and we had some I'm good times Richard. together. So here's I'm the deal. Richard, I'm gonna make sure time. you have a roof over your head for the next 30 days, and you're gonna have oh transportation for the next 30 days. But you're after cut that, me off like that Richard. I'm not cutting you off. You cut yourself off. Let me tell you this. Here's how I work. Every time I pull my car up in that driveway and I walk in that front door and I look at you, here's what's gonna go through my head: ball gag around the neck and chains on the wall. And Ain't flying in my world, okay? So we're done, okay? Coming up next, Cheaters revisits a previous case from its archives. It was unusual because the door swung open and Cheaters bust in. She watched the show every week. She always tell me she's going to put me on there, but I didn't believe it. Trying to get the customers out of there so we can enjoy ourselves some more. It was unusual because the door swung open and Cheaters bust in. She watched the show every week. She always tell me she's gonna put me on there, but I didn't believe it. What's going on up in Ooh, here? What the hell? Huh? What's going on up in here? What's up? Right, What's going on up in what here? Mean, what's huh? What you, what you been doing? What the and I want to invite it. Yeah, you, you familiar with these people? I know this. You thing. know what, what this is? Yeah, this you is. This is my you bust it, son. You bust it. What? what you been doing? Hell no. You this bitch? Come on. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it just what? keep it real with me what? right now. All I want you to do is keep what it real with me. Are you this bitch? Shut up, bitch. I'm not talking to you. Shut up.
Tasha real good friends with Shaquana, and uh, she didn't mean for it to happen. I kind of coached her into it. And uh, we was there late at night with each other every night, you know, cleaning the shop, getting prepared for the next day. And uh, Shaquana, when I get home, she be asleep. Most of the time I try to touch her, she didn't feel like it. Me and Tasha there at the shop and try to get me some before I go home. Oh, the violence during the confrontation was out of hand, you know. Shaquana was already upset at me, mad, and then by her friend being there, blowing it up even more, just took it over the edge and went over the top. I mean, she didn't even have anything to do with it. I don't know why she was, she was there getting her hair done, and she just pushed and pushed and beat, beat him up, beat her up, busted, bust up the whole place, you know, basically. I don't even know what she had to do with it. Come on, man, I'm not gonna tell y'all no more to get the out the way. Bitch! The next time I'm running Get your ass out of here, bitch! Hold on! 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 After everything was said and done, Tasha, she went her way, and uh, I tried calling her. I tried calling Shaquana as well, you know, to try to work things out with either one of them, but they wasn't having it. To move past it, I decided to go back on the road. I'm a professional truck driver, so it don't stop here, man. I'm going to keep moving. I don't know if Cheaters is in another city, but pretty they probably going to see some more of me, you know, because players play, you know. I can't see myself with just one when there's so many in the world. Following the violent confrontation, Ian Sutter demands distance between him and his girlfriend. Unable to comprehend the suspect's reasons for lying, Ian speaks to Cheater's producers, saying, I can't believe she won't take responsibility for what she did. I mean, she lied to me. She lied to him, and she doesn't even care. I'm done with her. Ian has moved his now ex-girlfriend out of their home, claiming that he doesn't care where she goes. Feigning outrage at her treatment by Ian, the suspect makes the claim that Cheater's is responsible for her breakup. Veronica states to Cheaters producers, if you guys hadn't stuck your noses into my business, I wouldn't be in this situation. I'd still have a place to live, and Ian wouldn't be pissed at me. Thanks a lot, Cheaters. The suspect currently searches for a new residence. The suspect's companion attempts to deflect the blame for the affair, claiming that the suspect lied to him as well as her boyfriend. When reminded by Cheater's producers what he had admitted during the confrontation, Quillat responds with a resounding, What? Now this is all my fault? A few expletives later, the companion slams the door on Cheater's producers. Enraged by the disturbing revelations of the confrontation, Richard Sharp cuts off all contact and financial assistance to the suspect. Speaking to Cheaters Professionals, Richard says, I told you if I caught her cheating that I was done with that trifling bitch. Play me like that and this is what you get. Richard admits he misses the attention, however, and declares he can always find another fish in the sea. Despite being caught red-handed, the suspect asserts to Cheaters that Richard will be back. Lang explains, oh, I know he'll come around. He knew what kind of woman I was, and I did him right when we were together. That sweet little man will be back. Then we'll have to play catch up with my bills. Lang also states that she and her companion continue to see each other. 
The suspect's companion, James Barry, tells Cheaters producers that he and the suspect have been friends for many years. Barry affirms, too many years for me to give up on her. You feel me? We're still friends, and that ain't gonna change anytime soon. Barry, however, refuses to give any financial assistance to the suspect, claiming that she's a grown woman and can take care of herself. 